Hello, I'm Taylor Hennessy, the CEO of Eclipse Sounds. Eclipse Sounds provides software vocalists for users all around the world, made in collaboration with talented singers. This is a different kind of video from our usual, where I won't be focusing on a specific voice, but instead I'll be providing some tips on getting started in Synthesizer V Studio 2. For any questions or feedback regarding Synthesizer V Studio 2, please reach out to the primary developers, Dreamtonics, directly. We can help with operation questions, but since we are just vocal developers, any specific questions about installation, system compatibility, future features, or bug reports should be directed towards Dreamtonics. Thank you. Due to the variety of updates and new features in Synthesizer V Studio 2, you may notice some changes when opening old projects. Here are some workflow suggestions to get you started. To keep this video short and sweet, there are no vocal samples included here. We suggest that you try them out for yourself or check out some demos like those hosted on our channel and website. Keep a copy of your old project. We highly recommend keeping a copy of your old Synthesizer V Studio project file, or SVP, in case you want to go back to the first version for any reason, like creating additional different vocal layers, referencing your old changes, or even just for comparison's sake. Even if you prefer the new project file, having more options is never a bad thing in a case like this, so definitely make a copy of your project before editing. Adjusting to Vocal Mode's new impact All vocal modes have become stronger in Synthesizer V Studio 2. As a result, some older projects of yours might sound a bit strange when imported directly. First, we suggest checking the vocal mode values and turning them down if necessary to accommodate for their new strength. When turning modes down, you might also want to note that vocal modes now have new controls that allow them to change pitch and pronunciation alongside timbre. To get modes working like they did in the first version, only the timbre knob should be used, but we absolutely suggest trying out the new controls as well. Then you should try adjusting the combinations, either to get back to your vocal line's original tonality, or to find a new tone that wasn't possible in the first version. While we aren't touching on them here, parameters have also gotten a lot stronger so you may need to reduce the values you used previously since they are capable of going much further. Using retakes to adjust everything. Retakes are also more powerful in this version, and we highly recommend relying on them for all kinds of changes. To perform any type of retake, just select the note or group of notes you want to make a new take for, and click any of the retake buttons. The All button just performs all of them at once, which is great for big changes. However, when adjusting old projects, we suggest creating new takes one at a time for the most precise control. Pitch retakes. Changing the pitch of a note can be done in a variety of ways, but when just getting started on editing your project, the best way to go might be to just use pitch retakes to get your notes to suit your preferences before going in and hand editing things. Pitch retakes are more powerful and more influenced by context in this version, so we recommend trying them out often, both when creating new projects or importing and adjusting existing ones. Timing retakes. Timing can be quickly adjusted and improved using these retakes, which shift phoneme lengths and onsets depending on context, providing the simplest way to further differentiate tracks with different singers when using the all button and also a quick way to make changes to timing-related pronunciation. Timbre retakes. These are great for both tone and pronunciation. If the way a note is pronounced sounds a bit off, or if you'd like a singer to have a different tonality when singing it, trying a few timbre retakes should give you a sound you prefer. Timbre retakes are much, much stronger in this new version, and might even be our most recommended improved feature. Pitch changes. When changing projects over to new versions of vocals, you may hear some pitch differences when compared to your original project. This is because the new versions have fully retrained models, so some things will be interpreted differently than they were originally. Like switching over to any new version of a context-dependent software, expect to make a few changes to pitch edits when adjusting your project to the new version. If you were a particular fan of a voice database's automatic pitch curves in the old version, you can achieve the closest equivalent to the original version by using the refined corner of the pitch grid. Flat pitch. The best way to achieve a flat pitch articulation style is to select all notes and use the expression grid on the notes panel, 
sliding the control into the bottom left, rigid corner. From here, you should keep the notes selected and also reduce the vibrato slider to zero. This will give you a much more manual control over the pitch. Finer pronunciation control. In Synthesizer VStudio 2, you have even stronger control over pronunciation. So, you'll be able to change the exact way a vocalist is singing any vowel or consonant. This includes timing, strength, and even the attack of a phoneme, controlled in the new phoneme timing panel, and usage of the new mouth opening parameter, which gives you exact control over how open a singer's mouth is at any moment. The mouth opening parameter even affects consonants in a powerful way, so we highly recommend trying it out. Thank you for following along with our tips for getting started in Synthesizer vStudio 2. As always, please feel free to reach out to us through our website contact form with any questions. We're always happy to help. While we didn't touch on them in this video, we hope you'll look forward to trying out our two newest voices, Havoc and Galanaya, when they release later this month.